Hi there, this is Tanner Steed. Uh, welcome back. Today we're going to be painting a white rose. So uh, uh, if you'd like to paint along with me, what you're going to need is a variety of brushes. I'm going to be using a filbert, a couple fan brushes. Uh, my palette today is super simple. It's going to be titanium white, cadmium lemon, raw umber, phthalo turquoise, ivory black, and a little bit of transparent yellow oxide. We're going to be going over uh, my whole procedure on how I paint flowers. Uh, this can be applied to every flower that you are painting. Um, I like to start out with something called an envelope, then I form a silhouette, then we mix a light value and a shadow value for um, every local color. So uh, we have a few local colors in this. We've got the white rose, we've got the stem, and then the, um, uh, the leaves. So you're going to need uh, light and dark of each. We're going to go over all of, all of those mixtures and how to stay harmonious in uh, your floral paintings. Um, we're also going to talk about gradations and how to soften edges and why to soften edges. Um, so I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Um, I will have the uh, reference image available on my Patreon. So if you're subscribed to that, you can have access to that. Uh, otherwise, let's get started. So to begin with, we're going to be using uh, vine charcoal. <clears throat> And I'm going to be drawing essentially just a silhouette of the flower. So a two-dimensional shape that represents the flower. And um, let's see. We've got kind of this nice angle. Let's see, i got to adjust this. There we go. So this is going to be the bottom, or the lowest petal. And I think we're just going to do a single rose to keep this nice and simple. And what's great about roses is you, uh, you can stretch them <laughs> and change the proportions and it's still going to look like a flower. Whereas you absolutely can't do that with um, a portrait, obviously. So my focus is on the outer shape much more than any of the petals on the inside. It's truly a silhouette. So although this is a white rose, I'm going to make the background light. So this is actually going to be a dark against the light. And maybe we'll include a leaf and the stem. And I'm going to have the stem go a little bit more towards the left. So we've got this diagonal emphasize the diagonal. Okay. Uh, the surface that I'm working on is a homemade board. It is a golden sandable gesso on an MDF board. All right, I like that. Um, the next step is to draw my shadow shape. So I'm going to squint down and decide where I'm going to place my primary shadow. So I'm going to make this feel a little bit more backlit than it actually is. So I'm going to have <clears throat> core shadow coming down here. Then it's going to go here. It's going to go back, core shadow, and then drop down here. So everything on the left of that line is going to be more lit than everything on the right of this line. Although this petal here, I'm going to include inside of the shadow. 
and then this is going to get a very subtle core shadow right here. So I'm, I have light coming from behind and light coming from the left. So the right side is going to be in shadow. So that was all drawn with vine charcoal. Now I'm going to switch over to graphite. I'm just going to take a mall stick and reinforce all of these lines. I make the squiggly line to indicate that it's a core shadow as opposed to a cast shadow. The core shadow is going to have a softer edge, whereas the form shadows are going to be much sharper. And it's important to be using a light pencil because you don't want these pencil lines to show through. I'm using an HB. I would actually recommend using uh, like a 2H or a 4H instead of an HB. The only reason why I'm using the HB is because it was already on hand and um, it'll come up better on camera. Okay, and then <clears throat> the stem is a cylinder, so I'm going to expand this. Send it out that way. Maybe we have a little thorn that continues in this diagonal going that way. We have another one going this way. And then Mm. <clears throat> able to see it better. And then I kind of want a gradation for the background. So maybe right about here, I'm going to create a transition tone from a warm to a cool. And then these kind of represent the leaves coming out from the base of the petal, base of the bulb. Notice how they have a direction to them too. And those are doing the same thing. Let me erase that one. Nice and simple. Take your time with this. Um, okay, the next step is I'm going to take a paper towel and we're going to wipe it away. Wipe away the vine charcoal, which will contaminate the paint. The graphite is going to stay put, so we will have no issue. All right, so let's squirt out some paint. So I, I have some pre-mixtures I'm going to be using, but I can tell you exactly what, is, what are in them. Um, this is just titanium white and a little bit of cadmium lemon. So it's a warm white that I've created. Um, I've also mixed it, pre-mixed it with liquid impasto and I think a little bit of stand oil. So it, it should set up quite quickly. Um, this is liquid impasto. I love to use this to speed up the drying time and to increase the thickness of my, or to retain the impasto, like thick brush strokes. Um, and then we're going to need some raw umber. Let me find that. Okay. 
I'm going to use Raw Umber by Old Holland. Put that right here. Boop. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of ivory black right here. Some transparent yellow oxide. You can use any yellow for this, but I like this one because it's transparent. I'm going to be using that on the warm side when we're, we have some uh, subsurface scattering. This is Thalo Turquoise. We're not going to need a lot of that. It's a very powerful color. I'm not going to use um, any white, uh, pure white. The white that I'm going to be using is my pre-mixture, which is just titanium white and like a molecule of um, cadmium lemon. All right, so we need to make a light mixture and a shadow mixture for each local color, okay? So this is a, a white rose, right? So we need a light mixture and a shadow mixture for that. So my lights, it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to do just this white, maybe a little bit of this transparent yellow oxide, a molecule of raw umber, and this is just to make it one small step darker than the background. There's my light mixture, now we're going to mix a shadow. So I'm going to grab a little bit of raw umber, a touch of ivory black, a few molecules of phthalo turquoise, and then a little bit of white. So we're going to have warm, lights, cool shadows. Notice how I'm mixing it very, very thoroughly. Okay, that's going to be our base. And now I want a value in between these two. And this value is going to be a little bit warmer. So I'm adding a little bit of the yellow, um, a little bit of my light mixture, and then a touch of my shadow. So this is just a value in between the two. We're making a scale. And notice how we are nowhere near our darkest dark. Okay, that's going to be a good placeholder. So this is going to be my rose values. And we're going to need to be able to go a little bit darker. So I'm going to grab, we're going to make one more value in this scale. So raw umber, ivory black, molecule of phthalo turquoise, and a molecule of white. I'm not used to mixing vertically. This is not how I normally paint. <laughs> and I'm running out of room. So okay, that was too much thalo. I'm gonna add a little bit more raw umber. I'm 
maybe a little more transparent yellow oxide. And this is just an option for getting anything darker. I'm going to squirt out just a little bit more phthalo turquoise and I'm going to put it down here. That way it doesn't impact those colors too much. Okay. Now my background, I want it to go light to slightly darker. Um, and I think I'm going to go with this pure yellow. Oh, it was contaminated with turquoise, so I'm going to move that over there. Pure yellow. That's going to be my value at the top. And then when I reach here, it's going to be a little bit of black, molecule of brown, and then that turquoise. That way everything is harmonized. to start painting. I'm going to be using a variety of brushes. Um, I can call them out as I use them, but some brushes that you will absolutely need. You're going to need a good fan brush. My favorite fan brush is the Rosemary & Co. Series 105. Um, it's got plenty of bristles. It never really splays or forks. I hate it when that happens. Um, it's just really, really soft too. So you're going to need that. I have a couple of them, one for my darks, one for my lights. Um, I'm going to be blocking in using this uh, Pure Sable Series 81 Rosemary & Co. You can use any filbert brush. This one just happens to be soft and the right shape. And I've got a mall stick to balance my hand. Don't waste your money. You can use any stick. <laughs> any stick will do. Go to your local creek and pull a stick out of the river. That'll work just the same. Okay, so the way I like to start is light to dark. And then I go back to front. <clears throat> Let me make sure this doesn't impact it. Wipe that away. Okay, so I'm diluting with just a little bit of Gamsol. And we're going to go with the background and the light side of the rose first. Um, I'll move the clamp later. So I'm diluting kind of like a watercolor. It shouldn't be dripping, but the goal is to make this nice and thin so I can just stain it. And if I need to make any adjustments, I can because it's painted thinly. I'm just actually going to go over the whole light shape of my rose to make things simple. also a really good idea to make sure that you've mixed enough of your colors. So if you're unsure about the quantity of paint that you have, mix too much. It's best to have paint left over than not enough while you're painting. Thalo turquoise in the sky, that's okay. Not the end of the world.
I didn't mix a color for the greenery yet, um, but I will make a subtle adjustment to my pre-mixtures, the mixtures that I already have, and those are going to work just fine um, for the greenery. This is going to be focused primarily on value more than uh, temperature. Or we will have temperature shifts, but um, less en emphasis on color, like wild colors. There's that classic saying that uh, value does the work, color gets the credit. That's the truth. Actually, since I'm working on the background, and I've already basically blocked in all of my light shape, I'm going to put in this lower half of this cooler mixture. I'm also going to keep it nice and diluted. Going right through the stem because it's a dark shape and it's in front. And I have to do something while the paint is still nice and wet. Oil paint, you know, it doesn't dry quickly, but it sets up. So I want this to be kind of a nice gradation all the way through. So I'm going to take my clean, let me make sure it's clean, fan brush. And I'm going to go through this. Watch carefully, I'm going to vertically blend the dark into the light and the light into the dark. Vertical, down, vertical, down. Skipping over that, vertical, down, vertical, down. Cleaning the brush, go through it one more time. Now I'm gonna go left and right. Oops, I got some black into that. <laughs> That was absolutely a mistake. I'm not used to having the, <laughs> the palette right there. So that's okay. I'm just going to wipe that away. This is good. You guys get to see me make a mistake and fix it. I'm going to replace that with more of this blue. Okay. Make sure my fan brush is clean. I'm going to do all of that again. Going right over the rose, that's OK, because it's standing in front of the background. So I'm going to have no issue changing it. The paint is nice and thin. <laughs> I did it again. Happy accidents, right? Could be kind of cool, actually. And for a moment, I'm going to remove this clip. All 
right, my background is complete. Okay, next up, I'm gonna block in my shadows. So watch carefully. I'm not going to my darkest dark. I'm going to this premixture right here. I also want to apply this nice and thin. And I'm just going to block in this whole shape. Hilarious. I, I, I've painted on every kind of surface, the expensive ones, the cheap ones, pre-made ones. This is my favorite surface to work on. It's so, so good. It's just golden sandable gesso on masonite. It's so cheap. I'm sorry, not masonite. It's MDF medium density fiberboard and it's so good Right, so we have our light shape, we have our shadow shape. Now I'm gonna do something crazy. Okay, I'm gonna be using this uh, Rosemary & Co. Eclipse Extra Long Comber. This is a 3 eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna be using this like a smaller fan brush. And I'm viewing this as a cone. Okay, so I'm going to be blending this edge, softening this edge, turning the form, and creating my halftone value. So this is going to be the same value as uh, my premixture over here. <sighs> or something similar at least. This is going to be the value of that petal immediately to the left. It's also going to climb up into here a little bit and be at the edges of this petal. I'm going to do the same here. Softening this edge because it's a core shadow. And the residue on my brush is being applied at the bottom left of this petal to create the dark half tones. Now I'm going to do the same up here and soften that.
and I'm pulling some of the light into these petals. Okay, I still haven't gone down to my darkest dark. So, yeah, immediately underneath this, we're gonna have some dark accents. This is very dark, so we'll see if this is necessary. I'm gonna place this underneath here. That's gonna reveal how bright that shadow shape actually is. <clears throat> and then I'm going to very carefully place in a few dappled marks for my core shadow. By placing this in, it reveals how bright that shadow is, and that becomes my reflected light. I'm also going to go along this petal. Put in my core shadow. Notice how it's significantly narrow, more narrow. Don't worry, I'm applying it first and then I'll manipulate it with another brush to make it a little softer. Okay, I'm also going to take this opportunity because I'm realizing this is the perfect value for the leaves. I'm gonna put a little bit of this onto the side, creating a new mixture right down here. I'm going to introduce some transparent yellow oxide, tinting it more towards a green, add a little bit of phthalo turquoise. A little goes a long way with the phthalo turquoise. Okay, now it's not super green, but relative to everything else, it's going to be the greenest thing in the picture. So now I can put in this dark. Obviously, I'm taking artistic liberties, designing these to be a little bit more exciting. There's one. What did we say? We'll have another coming up. That way. And then we'll have another over here. Okay, we'll adjust those as needed later. All right, we could also add our stem. Our stem is gonna be the darkest thing. So I'm gonna grab some black, some raw umber, yellow oxide, maybe a little bit of that, this mixture. And I'm just gonna very, very simply apply this and we'll get back to the rose. Now I'm going to get a smaller comber and I'm going to soften this core shadow. It feels like I'm sculpting with the paint. Just moving around what's already on the surface. Make sure you have a clean paper towel. <laughs> 
all about subtlety. I'm drawing out that petal that's a little bit darker. Okay, and I would like to introduce a little bit more warmth in here. So I'm going to take this mixture and we're going to test it out. Let's see if it's warm enough. I'm adding a little bit more transparent yellow oxide. I want to create that effect of subsurface scattering. So in here should be a little bit warmer. Just a little bit. So I can mix that into the paint and it should harmonize quickly. Also take some of this. We've got this really intense light coming through. sharpen some edges too. I'm going to need a smaller brush pretty soon. Only use the brush that allows you to do the job. No need to make it harder for yourself. So by keeping this far petal as close to the value as the background, um, it's going to feel as transparent as you can possibly make it. I didn't even dip into my light shape value, did I? I can do, start to do that now and pull out some of these lighter lights. This brush is nice. It kind of splays out. So I can kind of create the brushwork of the veins in a, a petal. Create some sharper edges in this. Here. The edge of the petal is going to be the darkest. Oops. I like to have some broken color in my flowers and create kind of like a marbled surface. The same technique can be applied to skin. OK, 
And here's my shadow value. Just making sure I have plenty of paint applied to this. I can use a little bit of my sky mixture. I'm, I'm sorry, my background mixture here. And maybe a touch more thalo turquoise for any of the lights that I'm seeing on this side of the, the rose. These are like simultaneously reflected light and or light passing trans through the transparency of the, the petal. Kind of like cross-hatching what I'm doing as I'm mixing it into the picture. This splayed brush is really useful because it doesn't apply it evenly. And I like that. The very edge of the petal. Um, you want to avoid having like an outline on the edge but it does tend to be kind of darker and gives you the opportunity to, like if the flower was dying or was like older, it tends to get crispy at the edges. So you can add a little bit more of a dark mark and it'll yeah, look like an older rose, which I like. If it's too perfect, Kind of boring, in my opinion. So as you go, you want to make your lights thicker and your shadows thinner. So I'm going to slowly build up the opacity and the thick application in the light shape. Because that is going to cause glare and it'll read as brighter than thinly applied white paint. And I want some of that background color coming into this rose too. It looks so, so nice. Glows. You want to find as many opportunities to lose an edge as possible. All right, let's get in this. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue up here. This plane is facing down. It's kind of peeling back. It's 
facing the ground plane. And then this lower half is being exposed to more bounced light, so it's going to be a little bit warmer. You might lose a little bit of that core shadow. You step back. Looks pretty cool. I'm going to go through the stem and soften that edge. It's quite stark. I'm just wiggling it back and forth, left and right, relative to the stem. And then I'm going to soften it, but with directional brush strokes to emphasize the diagonal that we're creating. Perhaps some of it is getting into this petal, that color. I will also soften these leaves. Same directional brush stroke. Adding a highlight. It's amazing what can be done with such a limited palette. getting darker outside. Let me change the exposure. It's a little bit brighter. Okay. Darken the side of the rose a little bit more. Oh, it's raining. <laughs> Be cool to make it look like it's raining in this picture. Kind of already has that vibe. Gonna make a much sharper edge against that petal.
and now I'm <clears throat> lightening this petal. So it's I, I have this procedure of blocking in the light, blocking in the shadow, and generalizing the forms, and then you go based on observation. You're like, okay, what needs to be adjusted? Well, this petal is lighter by just a little bit. And since it's underneath the category of being in that shadow shape, I'm not going to make it super bright. But it does need to go a little bit brighter. I'm going to get a smaller brush. so cool outside. Okay, to make this a little bit more exciting, I'm going to crisp up this edge like it's an older rose. Do the same down here. I also want some light passing through this. So we're going to mix this blue mixture and the light, some yellow. darker underneath the rose. This is going to increase the intensity of the reflected light again. So it's this constant push and pull until we get it right. Ooh, it's raining. <laughs> Love the rain. Sometimes I like to take my the back of the brush and scratch in some texture. I like to do it in the light shape and wherever I want to emphasize like the veiny veininess of the the petals just here and there. You can also use it as like a micro eraser and scratch away the paint. Certain surfaces will work better for this than others. I also want to have a light and shadow shape on the stem. So I'm going to make the left hand side just a little bit brighter because it's being influenced by the left light. So I'm just going to go down the stem here. I'm using the same mixtures, adding a little bit more Indian yellow. It's going to be a little darker. This one is exposed to it more. Cool, I like that. And 
then the core shadow on the stem, I'm just going to go like pure ivory black. Also going to put in some pure ivory black, uh, ivory black with Indian yellow to warm it up just a touch in this corner. Because my background color is so close to white, I can just scratch back with the back of my brush to remove some of the paint on the edge of the petals, and it still looks like the same value as the background, pretty much. Another option, if you can't do that, is to just use the yellow paint in the background to make your crisp edges. Add a little bit more blue reflected light. I think that might make for a little more drama. And we'll lighten some of the light passing through this petal. I think it needs 
needs to be a bit brighter. Okay, and then on the left side of the stem, because we've got this blue reflected light on the flower, I'm going to include it on the right side. So just a little bit of turquoise. There we go. And then it's just a matter of noodling <laughs> and making, you know, really subtle adjustments. Um, changing temperatures, subtle value shifts. And that could last as long as you would like. But I feel that this pretty much encompasses my process of painting flowers. So uh, to review, regardless of the flower or really the object, um, what you do is you start with that envelope with vine charcoal, okay? Then you move on to graphite after your silhouette is pretty accurate. Um, so take your time with that stage, use an eraser, draw it a few times if you're not sure, um, if you've never done it before. Um, then you're gonna mix up your colors. I like to start with the lightest and then make my way to the darkest generally. Um, I saw an opportunity for the lights to go into the light of the rose, so I blocked all of that in simultaneously. Uh, the background is a very, very light color, although this is darker than that, it's still a part of my lights. So light to dark, and then I blocked in my shadow shape. Um, I put in my core shadows, the slightly darker version. Um, prior to that, actually, I softened to create a little gradation around all of the forms. And then I blocked in my stem and leaves with a slightly different mixture. Everything is harmonized underneath um, a very simple color structure. Um, and yeah, feel free to comment, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Hope you learned something today. Um, I'm going to keep chipping away on this, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. But I hope you learned something. Uh, thanks for watching.